Welcome to the tutorial 3D Basics for Animate Pro, the first tutorial from the True 3D Space video tutorial pack. So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at building the dojo or rebuilding the dojo in 3D Space. So right now if we go to the perspective view and we hold down Alt Command or on Windows that's Control Alt and rotate our plane, we'll see that the dojo is actually a flat plane and that the only reason it looks 3D is because we actually drew it in perspective. But what we're going to do is create a 3D model of the dojo. So that it's actually in 3D. And the reason we're going to do this is because sometimes when you are creating scenes and you need to draw multiple backgrounds for the exact same setting, so you want it from this perspective and then you want it from this perspective, for example, instead of having to redraw the same scene again and again but from different angles, if you create something like this it's actually a lot faster, especially if you're doing a large production where you're going to reuse um, some of the sets. So before I get into how to lay out your 3D scene, I just wanted to put up a little disclaimer that if you're planning on rendering your final version of the scene as an SWF, please don't do it in 3D. The SWF format does not support the 3D effect, so you won't be able to render it in that format. So to lay out a scene like this, what I did, I'll show you what it looks like first of all. I call it safety because I wanted to keep a version of my layers flattened before I rotated them. It, it'll look something like this. And the three planes, the floor, the ceiling, and the floor of this, what I call the mezzanine. I was going to call it balcony, but we have a balcony that you can usually see just outside this door, so I called it mezzanine, um, are actually one on top of the other and they are the same size. So in this layer, where I have all the pieces laid out, you see the ceiling here on top. Let me just open this up. And then if we take away the ceiling from view, what I have here is actually the mezzanine floor. So let's take that away. And then underneath it I have the actual floor. So those three layers are one on top of the other because when I created them I actually used the floor to create the ceiling um, and then to create the mezzanine because I wanted them to have the exact same dimension or outer dimension so that they'll stack neatly one on top of the other. So the one thing to remember when you're creating a piece of architecture is that generally there's a lot of repetition. And when there's a lot of repetition, you'll, you should be using the duplicate, flipping, copy, pasting, uh, rotating, all these tools a lot because you're never going to individually draw just this one uh, you know, piece of the mezzanine balcony and then draw this one separately. You're obviously going to copy this and paste it over here um, to have a different version and then maybe paste it over here and then cut off part of it or vice versa, create this one first and then add a few paneled sections to it. And in fact, because we happen to have a 2D or flat version of this dojo already created, I took a lot of these elements from that dojo. So let's take a look at it again. So obviously I can't take this piece of the mezzanine balcony because it's drawn in perspective. So the pieces that I used were these ones because they were not in perspective. So pretty much anything from this back wall I used, I actually copied and pasted these two portions of the wall directly onto a new layer and then scaled them later on. Um, and I also used this shoji in the back as my, my best reference point. Um, a shoji is this paper screen with the black lacquered dividers that you usually see in Chinese or Japanese architecture. But I did end up using these other panels not directly as items that I copied and pasted onto new layers but as reference points um, for drawing a flattened version, uh, reusing these elements that were already flat. And of course when I created the different shojis for the two paneled walls I reused rows. I would copy and paste five rows at once, uh, paste them somewhere else and drag them down so I'd never be drawing one line across, the next line across, the next line across. I would always be trying to select groups, copy them, paste them, drag them, um, 
almost never redrawing anything by hand. I think the most delicate item that I had to draw was when I had to restructure this back wall so there was an opening for the door. So some things you have to do a little bit more intricately, but for the most part, you're trying to do a lot of base cutting and pasting. So let's take a look again at our safety layer. And you might ask how I knew what size to make the floor, ceiling, and mezzanine floor, as well as how to make these walls at the height that they're at and where to place these pieces of the balcony. Well, a lot of them were just guesswork. I mean, your artists, your illustrators, your animators, you all have a good eye for perspective. So you can tell by looking at your reference, your flat 2D dojo, how long this room should be. I actually created this floor originally just arbitrarily to the base of my project size to the so to the end of this gray line and then I realized that it would be a really short room it looks really stubby and I know that this dojo from its perspective looks much longer so I then ended up scaling my rectangle past this point and then I made uh, I believe I actually started with the ceiling and then I made the floor in the mezzanine balcony from um, that size in terms of the walls I actually don't know how high they are supposed to be I had to guess but the thing is when you work in 3D, just like when you work in 2D, you can always adjust. So I did my best guess um, for how high I think they should be um, relative to looking back and forth, and I made them that size. Um, these balcony pieces, or these pieces for the mezzanine balcony, I also placed arbitrarily. It's where I think they should be, but once again, once I start flipping everything in 3D, there might be a lot of adjusting. So I laid them out basically where everything should be, but it might not be exact. And the one thing you can't see, but it's actually under the floor here, if I can hide the floor, is that I actually have all four layers of the beam. So the four sides of any of the beams that you see um, in the dojo layer here. And I only made one because, of course, I'm going to build it in 3D and then I'll show you the different methods I'll use to copy it. Because it's a, a, a item that's used repetitively throughout the dojo, it's of course something that you should be copying and pasting and not making several versions of. And the last thing I'd like to tell you is that you have to be sure that anything you want to rotate in 3D space has to be on its own layer. So let's go back to the perspective view and let me bring back the 3D dojo. So for example, this floor with this light brown portion here, um, all these black lines, any of these textured lines, I didn't finish doing the texture here, um, any of the dividing lines for the tatami mats, all of those are on one layer because I wanted to flip this layer and all of its details together. Anything that you need to flip by itself or rotate by itself, it has to be on its own layer, which is the only other thing you really need to know. So I'm not going to actually create the layers that we saw in the safety group here um, for you in these videos. I think that's actually something that you should go back to the drawing videos and the drawing tool videos to learn how to do. But with the sample material, I will include uh, the safety group so you can see what the layers look like flattened as well as a copy of the 3D Dojo already done. Um, so you can examine those and get an idea of how it's done. But it's probably best if you actually try to create these flattened layers yourself and not use the ones that I've made um, for the dojo so that you can go through that exercise yourself as well. The exercise of looking at a flat image, so something like that, and then being able to lay out the pieces for something like this and then finally creating a 3D model like this. So it really is a good exercise. So on that note, I'm actually going to replicate the safety group so that I can use it to show you what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So I right click on the safety group layer and say duplicate selected layers. It's made me a safety underscore one. And uh, maybe I'll rename safety underscore one to I'll call it tutorial dojo. That's the one I'll be using in the tutorial. Then let's drag the safety under. Okay, so let's open up the tutorial dojo. So it's this, what we're looking at right here. And the first thing we have to do is turn these layers into 3D layers. Because right now they're locked in a way that you can only draw flat 
uh, images like this. Right now, even if you wanted to in the perspective view, you could not rotate these layers. So we do that by double clicking on the layers. Let's double click on the ceiling layer here to bring up the layer properties. And what we have to then check in the transformation tab is the enable 3D option. So when we click this, you'll see that three portions of the layer properties have automatically changed. And those are the scale, the rotation, and the pivot. So let me just uncheck again. And then do it one more time. So I'm going to go through each of these sections. But what I'm going to do first is create a window here for the layer properties panel so I won't have to constantly double click on these layers and they'll automatically appear in this window as I click on them. And unfortunately, I'll have to do that for all of these layers. And there we go. So let's take a look at some of the parameters that have changed in the layer properties panel, starting with the scale. So the scale has two options, either locked or separate. So if you keep the scale locked, your object will scale on all three axes, the X, Y, and Z, and it'll scale in proportion. Um, if you keep your scale separate, you'll be able to do things like squash and stretch. Um, I believe for the beams, I kept them separate because I had to shorten the length of some of the beams or make them longer. However, I didn't want to make them wider. So if I had kept them locked, they would have gotten wider as well. So separate can be good for something like that. The one thing you have to be aware of is that with scaling in 3D, for 2D animation, you can never extrude. So you can never create thickness from scaling. The only way that you can actually create thickness is what I'm like what I'm going to show you with the beam where you create box like shapes. So the second parameter we're going to look at is rotation and this is the main parameter that you use when you're working in 3D. So there are two types of rotation as well, quaternion and Euler. It looks like it's Euler but I've been told it's pronounced Euler. So quaternion is very much like locked and Euler is very much like separate. So with quaternion, you have four pieces of information that um, are given, and that is the x, y, and z axis positions, as well as their velocity. And all of this is taken together for smooth, continuous rotation. So if you create a keyframe on any of these three axes, it'll appear for all three. Um, and this is usually the, your, the choice when you're trying to make camera movements in 3D space to so get those smooth rotations. Euler, on the other hand, is good for when you're piecing together um, objects to create your scene. You're able to rotate them individually, like I said. Um, if you add a keyframe to any of these three axes, it will remain only on that axis. These three axes act individually and they have their own velocity as well. So in terms of making movements using the Euler angles, it can be a bit choppy, so you do have to look out for that. The last parameter that changed was the pivot. Obviously because we're working in 3D space, the pivot now exists not only on the X and Y axis, but also on the Z axis. Um, you use the pivot tool to move the pivot position just like you would in 2D space. We're in the camera view right now, so you're not seeing the proper pivot. But it is always positioned at the 0, 0 point to begin with, and if you want to move it along the Z axis specifically, you have to use the top or side views to be able to um, have that pivot re recede or advance in space. When you move the pivot point, that becomes your new center for both rotations and for scaling. So that's it for the tutorial 3D Basics. Stay tuned for the next tutorial 3D Tools.